Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we're installing a channel drain in a driveway. And you can see we've got a piece of the channel drain out here. But what happens is this driveway comes downhill into the garage. And of course it's flooding their garage. You can see the crack in the concrete. That indicates there's a lot of water underneath of here. Also the slab of the garage floor has been cracked. So what we've got to do is cut across the driveway two times about a foot wide then we'll dig that out and install the channel drain we're going to hook up this downspout on this side it's going to go over to a sump pit over here we'll hook up that downspout then we'll pump it all the way out here to the curb so quite a job homeowner could do it themselves it's really not that hard it just takes a long time a lot of labor so right there in the corner, right beside Gerald there, we're going to put a sump pit. And he's pulling up the bricks there of the brick walkway. That's where our discharge line is going to come out and go out to the street. On the other side, there's a downspout over there that Chuck's hooking up. We need to trench that line because that's going to tie into our channel drain as well. It doesn't have to be real deep. Channel drain's not deep, but we're going to let that one flow through the channel drain across the drive. We'll empty into the sump pit where you can see Gerald starting to dig. That's where we'll put the sump pump on this side of the driveway. Okay, so while these guys are digging, we're gonna go ahead and perforate our pit. And we do this because we want some of the water to you know, drain out of the pit or vice versa. When it rains hard, we, don't, we want the water to come into the pit so it doesn't float upwards. So this is just like a boat. So just a few holes. we perforate around the side of it. So we've got our pit down here in the ground and now we're able to set our temporary sump pump up because when we there's no place for the water to go. When we run the water right here to cut this concrete it'll just flood so we need a place to set that sump pump up. We've got that in there we're just going to temporarily, you can see our sump pump with a temporary hose on it. We're just going to pump it out here to the street. We've already started that trench at the street. We're using a diamond bit on our saw. Cuts right through there like butter. And notice that we have the water running because we need that water to cool the blade down. Also keeps the dust down really, really well. So while I'm cutting the driveway, I'm having the guys go ahead and finish the trench on out to the street and that's for our discharge line for the sump pump. You'll, you'll notice I'm using the channel drain as the straight edge and this is because some people say go ahead and snap a chalk line but as you can see the amount of water and dust and the, the mud from the saw itself you can't see the line it's impossible. So it's better to have some type of a straight edge through there. You'll also notice I'm using the level, which is two feet long, to give us a good guide and keep our line good and straight. Normally you're a little closer to the garage door, but this is the low spot of the drive, and so this is where the channel drain has to go. Okay, so we finished cutting both sides of the concrete so we can install our channel drain. Now we're going to break this out. The secret to this is just keep pounding with your pry bar until the concrete cracks. I promise you that it will crack. If you cut all the way through it, you'll be able to do this in a matter of seconds. It's really that simple. We pound just like a jackhammer and that concrete will get weaker and weaker and you can see the cracks and then we'll pry those out with the pry bar and we'll be ready to install the channel drain. <clears throat> so we've already cracked a few of them. Pry this first one up. It's ready to go. Yep, pry it up there. We just pick that piece up. We tried them not to make them too heavy, but concrete is heavy. As you can see, how quickly that cracked. Just go down into it, Gerald. <laughs> and you can hit, it's all right. And you just pry it up so you can get them out. 
Remember that the secret is to cut clear through the concrete, and then this becomes a fairly easy process. Pound down through it, Gerald. Yep, lift them right up out of there. Doing great, doing great. Just pound right down through it. Got to hit the same place every time. It's just like a jackhammer, but we're human hammers. Cool. I appreciate the illustration. I made it all clean. It's a good deal. You have a teacher. So you got a lot of pieces in your wheelbarrow. You just go ahead and go dump those out that we could just pop them right into the wheelbarrow. But again, you just keep tapping it, just like a jackhammer. So you just got to keep hitting it. A little bit faster, please. There you go. <laughs> a jackhammer. Jackhammers go real quick. Yep. And there I see a crack forming. Probably hard to see it on the camera, but it comes right through there. You just keep hitting it. You keep going down through it, pry it a little bit so that you can move the next piece. Make sure you pry that one a little bit, Gerald. Going down into it. Now try to pry it so it moves, so you're not be able to move it yet. Not yet, but it'll be good. The, the secret is to go straight down with your pry bar. If you go at an angle, it's like ten times as hard. Straight down. So remember that <clears throat> concrete is a very strong substance, but when you hit it with a hammer or a pry bar many times it works just like the jackhammer it just weakens the concrete and eventually it will crack and the real secret here is to be able to cut clean through the concrete so let's take a look here so you can see if you cut clear through the concrete we're down into the clay you can see this is clay and not not concrete cut clear through when you take that pry bar and crack through it it's just going to pop right out of there real simple simple job so now that we've made our cut and removed the concrete, we need to clean up a little bit because this is kind of like concrete dust. Although it's wet, if you leave it on there, it's going to dry onto your old concrete. So we want to try to get as much of it up as possible before we go any farther. So now we're plumbing the discharge line. This is inch and a half PVC. Got it. it goes all the way out to the street to the curb cut. Putting our couplings on. We need to glue this. Good amount of glue, both sides of coupling. Somebody twist the back of that pipe for me. Never mind. Got it. So let's kind of recap a little bit. Remember the first thing that we did was we actually dug this sump pit. This is just temporary sitting down in there because we had to run water in order to cut this concrete. So we needed a place for that water to go. And you can see it's running through the, the trench right now, coming down through, goes into the pit, and the pump lifts it up and kicks it out. So we'll let this all dry out. And tomorrow we'll go ahead and install, cover up, put the concrete in and we'll be done. Each coupling needs to be glued. Perfect. So you can see we went under the cable wires. We've got inch and a half going all the way to the street and it starts back at the sump pump from the discharge. We'll show you that in just a second. <laughs> okay, so we've got our pit installed, our discharge line. Tomorrow we'll hook up the channel drain. That's what this trench is all about right here. We'll also hook up that downspout in that corner over there. And that water from the roof will come through the trench drain and come all the way over here. We're going to backfill this area right in here just so it stays put. And that's about as far as we'll get today. As you can see, our discharge line comes out. We've already covered that. Inch and a half PVC. This is uphill coming out here to the street. 
and here's where we're going to discharge right here and that pump will kick that water out no problem at all should keep up with fairly heavy rains of course you'll never beat mother nature here at the curb where we're discharging we've already used the concrete saw and made a couple of cuts now all we do is take the pry bar pop it loose they lift right out finally we'll just go ahead and grind it out a little bit with the pry bar just to clean out the trench okay so now we're ready to set the pump permanently and permanently do the discharge we already cut the riser Next, we're putting on the check valve. Remember that arrows point up. Use your handy dandy drill. Tighten up those clamps. Make sure they're good and secure. Set your pump back in the, in the pit. Get it square where you need it. Next, we're going to put on our uh, no hub to the discharge line where we'll make our connection. Glue up your fittings. Bring a 90 up. Tighten up your no-hub with your handy-dandy drill. More glue, another 90. There's already a hole cut there in the pit. Now we'll just run a piece of pipe right across from 190 to the other. Glue it up good and tight. And it's done. Has a permanent discharge with a check valve. That water will run all the way out to the street. You can also see the uh, discharge of the channel drain there. Yeah, this is a slow process. You just gotta get it in your trench and trowel it out. But take your time, it should come out really good. Notice that we put the blue tape over there. Well, we don't claim to be Masons. Uh, you as a homeowner, you should be the same way. You know, just go ahead and mix up your concrete, put it in there, make sure you've got a good trowel. You'll be able to make this look really good. And it just takes a long time to put that mortar in there and make it, you know, finish it. Other than that, it's a real simple process. So we'll let this video run just for a little bit. You can just see how we put the concrete in. One guy is mixing it, bringing it over in the wheelbarrow, and then I'm just putting it into the trench, troweling it out. And we'll finish it. The last thing we'll do is finish it. You'll notice that we've got tape over top of our grades. That's just to keep the you know, concrete from getting down into the channel drain. And when it's all set, we'll pull that tape right off of there and it'll look really good. Channel drain is about 24 feet long and it takes quite a bit of concrete to put back in here. I think we're using seven bags, seven 80 pound bags of concrete. Not expensive, but it does take a long time to put it all in. But you can see as we start to finish it, it starts to come out and become really clean. This is going to dry extremely white. Um, you can see the old concrete there. It will be super bright white when it's dry and it should look really good. The hardest thing about putting channel drain into the driveway is to try to get your slope, get your pitch, to get that water to run across the drive. Um, most of the time, you're going to end up going through grade. In other words, you're going to have to make your channel drain go channel drain go down through the higher part of your driveway. So here at the beginning of this line, you can see it's fairly flush, has just a little bit of fall to drop into it. But as we get further down into the other side of the driveway, 
it's going to have a much deeper drop into the to the channel drain. Not not so much that your car can't drive over it, but it will be more than you think. Okay, so we patched up the curb. You can see our discharge coming out there. Should work really good. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, I guarantee you can do it. Have a great day. Good morning, Chuck here with Apple Drains. You know, a lot of times I'll come back to a job site and just double check things and make sure things are working good. Uh, we installed this channel drain here yesterday and it rained really hard last night, a couple of inches. It looks like it's working really good. Um, you know, the debris, of course, the leaves on top of the channel drain, that's normal. But, you know, there's a sump pump that comes from the crawl space coming ties into that downspout drain. And then we've got it running through our channel drain and it's looking like it's working really, really good. Let's go out to the street and see what kind of a discharge we have. So you can see we've got a tremendous discharge. When that pump kicks on, that will come straight out here to the street, to the curb, flows down this curb where it belongs, down to the storm drain.